It's the beginning of February in almost North Georgia. It's 64 degrees outside and 59 degrees in the water. And I know all you suckers want me to get it. So this is for you guys. Here I go. The worst enemy to creativity is self-doubt. Sylvia Plath. What inspired me to start this travel brand, really, was self-confidence. I've almost never believed in myself or my dreams, though I've always had a desire to see the world. Back when Wi-Fi first came out and I received my first camera, I remember storing pictures online and coming across photos from other photographers. One of the very first pictures I fell in love with was the Seychelles Islands off the coast of East Africa. It was then I started discovering how much insane beauty there was out there, and I got bit by the travel bug. I first went through that phase where you don't really go travel because your friends are too busy and they can't come with you. And ultimately, I really do enjoy traveling more when I have people to share it with. But if you really like to travel, that's not an excuse. So I had to grow. During college, I chose to do a traveling project for my photography class and went on my first solo trip to Savannah, Georgia. I stayed in a hotel, which was kind of lonely, but I learned a lot during my time there. After that, I realized I would need to save money to continue to be able to travel for the rest of the semester. That's when I discovered Couchsurfing.org, a website for people who love travel, who can host strangers or stay in strangers' homes for free. It seemed kind of like a European backpacking or hostel-like concept, but I decided to take a risk and give it a shot in the United States. I did my best to ignore the worries of others who said it sounded like a death wish and ended up pleasantly surprised. The pay it forward concept of couch surfing was hard not to fall in love with. I met amazing, humble, and so loving groups of people who welcomed me in like I was already family. I made some of my closest friends and am easily inspired by and encouraged by this community to just go for it. One of the first exposures to caring for the environment that I had was observing my Buffalo, New York host, Mike, when we went out on a hike to the waterfall. He brought grocery bags with him and was picking up other people's trash along the trail. This was a new concept for me, as I still had the attitude of, if I didn't do it, I don't have to fix it. His gentle spirit and love for nature outpowered my prideful perspective. This ties into why I am doing the Plastic Free Challenge, which I am going to talk a little bit more about later. But I just wanted to include this because I love how seemingly insignificant small moments and details in life tend to add up into something great later. Sometimes we think our impact on someone doesn't really matter, but it really does plant a seed for later on in life. I had another experience similar to this several years later when I was on a camping trip with some German couch surfers. They were picking up trash along a trail that we were hiking on and they weren't even from our country and they cared so much. It was inspiring. Going back to traveling, in 2013 after I graduated from college, I had an opportunity to leave the country and live in Guatemala for six months. Guatemala was probably one of my most life-changing experiences. I don't want to go into too much detail here, but I was never the same afterwards. Upon my travels there, I began working at a school that had several programs. Asociación Vida's main program was a school for kids with special needs. But they also had a sector they were trying to build that was called Reciclarte, and they wanted to build furniture and art and anything they could with trash. It was recycled art. I fell in love working on this project. It was a creative project, but also fulfilled the soul because it was like I was doing such a good thing. This trip really opened my eyes to the plastic problems we have in the world and the issues we have with recycling and planted the biggest seed in my soul. After Guatemala, I was in the Dominican Republic for a week on a home build mission trip. I once again was reminded of the pollution problems of the planet because everywhere I walked, I was surrounded by trash. After I returned home from Guatemala and Dominican Republic, I got depressed for a really long time. 
I've been doing a lot of work on myself and preparing and saving money and brainstorming ways I could continue to travel and also be able to help people and financially support myself. It's taken me a long time, but I'm ready to go and start traveling again. I tied this plastic challenge into my travel vlog because ultimately, travel is what inspired me and taught me so much that led to me caring about plastic waste. I was tired of seeing videos go by on Facebook about the trash mountains in the ocean and the sea animals getting hurt and dying from plastic pollution. It was depressing and complaining about it doesn't do much, so I wanted to think of something creative I could do to help out. The video that pushed me past brainstorming mode and into action mode was a video on Allison's Adventures. She is a more famous than I travel blogger who even started a recycled plastic bikini line after seeing all the trash in the ocean. Believe it or not, this bikini is made out of 15 plastic bottles. And those bottles were from that bag of trash I lugged back from the Maldives. As she exposed this trash mountain in the Maldives, I was equally horrified to see such an ugly thing and inspired to do something about it. This is when I thought up this 30 day plastic free challenge to see what it would be like to live without plastic and see how difficult it would be to really make this lifestyle change. I even made my own plastic bikini, but I'd have to say I think Allison did a better job on that one. I originally thought of this idea in October, but I didn't have the right equipment and I also didn't really wanna get started with the holidays coming up and worry about it then. I thought about January 1st, but I felt like January 1st was too cliche and it would get lost in the abyss of all the New Year's resolutions that go unfulfilled. So I was shooting for February 1st, but I felt like that was going to come too soon, so I chose February 8th, a random date, but I think it's a great reminder that we can start over fresh at any time instead of having to have a specific day that we're going to start our life over. You can start your life over today. Ironically, as I've been preparing for this challenge and tagging on Instagram, I stumbled across others who are doing the same thing, and I found out there's even a movement of people going plastic free for the whole month of February. I didn't even know about this hashtag plastic free February. I just thought of the idea on my own. So finding others who had the same mindset was so incredibly encouraging. Akua Odyssey, for example, is also giving up plastic for 30 days. So make sure you check her out on Instagram and support her as well. I'm getting started today, so wish me luck. You can follow me on Instagram for daily updates on the challenge and subscribe to my YouTube. I'm going to be posting a video once a week, Thursday nights at 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So stay tuned February 14th, Valentine's Day, for the next video. I also want to encourage my viewers to try out this 30 day plastic free challenge as well and comment or send me a message and let me know how it's going for you. If you've been enjoying my videos, please share with all of your friends and tell them to subscribe too. See you later. I'm losing plastic. Shit. No plastic pollution. Oh my god, I lost like everything. Holy shit. Oh. I'm so cold. It's like colder than the other day when it was like cold outside.
and I forgot. <laughs> oh, I remember my lines now. It's literally colder than the other day. <laughs> I don't want to go back in. It's cold. Yeah, it's like psychological torture. <laughs> I can't do this. It's hard to do it without my hands. I'm Italian! <laughs> <laughs>